Today we're going to look at a nice problem that was on the Canadian Intermediate Math Contest in 2014. And I believe this is an undergraduate math contest, maybe based out of the University of Waterloo. Okay, so let's see what we've got here. We want to define a sequence of real numbers by the following recursion. So we have an plus 1 is equal to 10 to the n times an squared. And then our goal is to determine all seeds, a1, so that the limit of this sequence is equal to zero. Okay, so we're gonna start with a bit of exploration and see if maybe we could get some sort of like formula for a n in terms of n and a1 and if that would help us out. So let's note that at the moment, a1 is really free to be anything. And then a2, we'll notice that a2 is a 1 plus 1, so that's going to be equal to 10 to the 1 times a1 squared. Okay, now let's look at a3. So a3 is a 2 plus 1, so that's going to be 10 squared times, let's see what we have here, we'll have a2 squared. But now, putting that together, notice we know what a2 is, what will that give us? So that's going to give us a 10 squared from the a2 term, and then a 10 squared from this, so that'll be a 10 to the 4th power times an a1 to the 4th power. Okay, good. And now, let's keep going. So a4, so that's going to be 10 cubed times a3 squared. So that's going to end up giving us 10 to the 11 times a1 to the 8. So I think something that jumps out very, very quickly is that the power of a1 is even, or sorry, not only just even, it's a power of 2. And furthermore, it's like one less power of 2 than the index we are at. So notice here we're at a sub 4, and 8 is 2 cubed. Here we're at a sub 3, and 4 is 2 squared. Okay, let's calculate maybe one or two more. So we'll have a5 is 10 to the 4 times a4 squared. So let's see, in the end, that's going to give us 10 to the 22 times 10 to the 4. So that is 10 to the 26 times a1 to the 16. And then maybe one more for good measure, let's do a6, so that's going to be 10 to the 5 times a5 squared. So in the end, that's going to give us 10 to the 57, I believe, times a1 to the 32. Okay, great. So now we should probably get some sort of handle on these numbers right here, this 57, this 67, this 11, sorry, 26, this 11, and this 4, and, well, nominally this 1 right here. And let's observe that they're all of a really nice form. So let's notice that 57, well, that's actually equal to 64 minus 6 minus 1. Now, that might seem like kind of crazy, but notice that 64 is equal to 2 to the 6, and then 6 is the index right here, so minus 6 minus 1. And then likewise, 26 is equal to 2 to the 5 minus 5 minus 1. And then furthermore, let's see up here, 11 is equal to 2 to the 4 minus 4 minus 1. And finally, 4 is equal to 2 cubed minus 3 minus 1. So that gives us some like nice formula for those other terms right there. So let's see if we can do something with that. So let's note that it seems like we have a sub n is equal to 10 to the 2 to the n minus n minus 1 times a1 to the 2 to the n minus 1. So something like that. But let's see if we can simplify that. And in fact, we can. So let's observe that that'll be equal to 2 or 10 
to the two to the n times a one to the two to the n minus one all over 10 to the n plus one. And then we can in fact do one more thing here and observe that this 10 to the two to the n is actually equal to 100 to the two to the n minus one, which is actually a nicer way of looking at it because now we can combine those terms in the numerator. So observe now we have 100 times a one to the two to the n minus one over 10 to the n plus one. Okay, so, well, that's not really a proof that this is the form. That's just our claim at the moment. Now let's prove that this is the form by induction and we'll see where that takes us. Okay, so now we're gonna prove our closed form using induction. Notice we don't really need a base case because we've done that. We did that during our exploration. Okay, so now let's go ahead and suppose for some k bigger than or equal to one, we have, well, we have the result holds. So any, in other words, a sub k is equal to 100 times a1 raised to the 2n minus 1 over 10 to the n plus 1. And then we're going to consider the next case. So let's consider a sub k plus 1, which by our recursion over here is 10 to the k times a sub k all squared. Okay, so let's see what that leaves us with. Oh, and these should have been k's. I think I said n, but obviously our index is k in this case. Okay, so that's gonna leave us with a 10 to the k, and then we have 100 a1 raised to the two to the k minus one over 10 to the k plus one, and then that whole thing is squared. So let's bring that square into the parentheses. So I still have this 10 to the k out front, and then I'll have 100 a1 to the two to the k. That's because when you multiply two into a power of two, you get the next power of two. I guess that's pretty obvious. And then down here in the denominator, we'll have 10 to the two k plus two. But observe that that gives us exactly what we want. We have 100 a1, to the two to the k over 10 to the k plus two, which is obviously k plus one plus one as needed. Okay, so we've got our format for our nth term. Now let's see where we can go from there. Okay, so armed with the closed form for our nth term of our sequence, we now claim that the limit of this sequence is equal to zero if and only if the first term is between zero and not one, but one over 100. And now why is that? Well, that's because observe that this denominator is growing without bound. So, well, if the numerator is not growing without bound, in fact, if it is either converging to zero or one, well, then this thing fairly clearly goes to zero. But observe that as long as a one is between zero and one over 100, then this numerator is always between zero and one, thus the denominator wins out. But then what happens if a1 is outside of this range? Well, that means that you're raising some number larger than one to the two to the n minus one. But raising something to the two to the n minus one is gonna be much, much faster growth than raising something to the n plus one. So we would expect as long as this this 100 a1 is bigger than one, we would get divergence. And that's what we're gonna prove as part of this. Okay, so let's see how we can do this. So let's do this reverse direction first. So in other words, we'll suppose that a1 is between zero and one over 100. But now let's observe that that means that 100 a1 is between zero and one. But now that means that our sequence a sub n is between zero and one over 10 to the n plus one. And that's simply by dividing all parts of this inequality by 10 to the n plus one after of course exponentiating them to the two to the n 
minus one power. But now observe that the largest term over here, the upper bound of our inequality, pretty clearly goes to zero as n goes to infinity. The lower bound is already equal to zero. So putting those two things together, we have our limit must be, well, nothing else other than zero by the squeeze theorem. Okay, so now let's do the forward direction and we'll do the forward direction by contrapositive. So in other words, let's suppose that A1 is strictly bigger than one over 100 and we'll show that this cannot converge to zero. Okay, but now let's observe that this means that 100A1 is strictly bigger than one. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, that means that we can write 100A1 as one plus x, where x is strictly bigger than zero. Okay, great. And now let's go ahead and do the limit. So the limit is n goes to infinity of a sub n. In this case, well, it's gonna be the limit as n goes to infinity of, let's see, we'll have one plus x raised to the two to the n minus one over 10 to the n plus one. But now we'll do a binomial expansion on this one plus x to the two to the n minus one and just keep the first couple of terms. And well, we'll just use an inequality here. All we have to do is show that this limit is bigger than zero. We don't need to show that it's infinite. That's not part of the problem. So this thing is gonna be strictly bigger than the limit as n goes to infinity of one plus two to the n minus one times x over 10 to the n plus one. Okay, great. But now observe that this one over 10 to the n plus one term will just simply go to zero. So we'll be left with this two to the n minus one over 10 to the n plus one term. So I'll factor the x out and now I'll have a limit as n goes to infinity of, let's see, it'll be a half times two to the n over 10 times 10 to the n. So I've written it like that. So I've got two terms that have an nth power and we can cancel this down to simply one over five. But now we've got one over five times a half well, that's clearly one over 10, and then all of that's over 10. So that's gonna be one over 100 times x. So this is equal to x over 100, which is bigger than zero. So our limit in this case, we don't know what it is, but it is bigger than zero. Although, of course, I think it's not too hard to show that this limit is infinite, but that's not what we're doing here. And that's a good place to stop.